House is very smart and he's an asshole. Very, very smart asshole. Uh, if you're a fan of Dr. House, like Dustin, for example, then, you know, you're a fan of House, but you can't be as smart as House because he's a fictional character. So you're going to be less smart and you might not be so sensitive to the method behind the assholeness. And you might be an asshole and unnecessary times compared to Dr. House. You'd be a bigger asshole that's not as smart. Then, if you become a follower of Dustin, you're two steps removed. Then you become DGG, where you're not as smart as Dustin, but you, um, are, you still want to copy all his worst excesses and his easiest to emulate excesses, which is being an asshole. And you will realize that there's some method behind Dustin's assholery and then you become a bigger asshole. So you're two steps removed from a very smart asshole into being a kind of probably smart, massive asshole. This is just a theory. House is very smart and he's an asshole. I actually super duper agree with this, 1 million percent. Destiny. Stephen Copernicus Baldemar the seventh son of Chad Dustin Streamer Gamer POC Polyam LGBTQA plus AAA um, non binary what banned from Twitch. After 11 years, well, after, after uh, Hassan Piker paved the way, of course. But, but, yeah, banned. No specific reason given after being here for 11 years. After carving out a space on Twitch that was, like, uniquely for politics, which they didn't have before. They haven't said why. There's been a lot of suggestions because Twitch TOS is fucking horrible and he's done plenty of things that could be the option. So there's been a big scatter. I don't really want to talk about whether or not he broke TOS though. Like, I, because that's not, that's like, that's kind of like a no go zone. Like we've all broken TOS. Like everyone on Twitch at some point breaks TOS when they're not realizing it. Like I've broken TOS on this platform. I'm joking, I would never, never do that. But yeah, Twitch TOS is absolutely disgusting. And the fact that they don't tell you why they ban you, even if you've been here as long as he has, is like really, really annoying. Um, but I don't really want to, I don't really care about that because we, I'd rather talk about just like why. Like, does he deserve to be banned? Like, did he cross a threshold to get banned off of a streaming platform? Um, well, some of the reasons that people have given are he uh, had Nick Fuentes on his stream for about five minutes before he decided to pull it onto YouTube. Well, I don't care. He clearly realized that Nick was TOS uh, just to be on the stream, so he took him off. That's probably not a good enough reason for an indefinite ban. Some are saying that he got banned for his opinions on trans sports, that he thinks trans women shouldn't compete in cis women's sports. Lots of people on Twitch believe that and have said that. I think that's a really stupid reason for a ban, even though it's probably not impossible. Um, people are calling him transphobic because of that opinion, which is like, okay, a lot of transphobes hold that opinion. It's an interesting one because, I mean... People who uh, believe that trans women shouldn't be allowed to play in cis women's sports. Well, a lot of people believe that, okay? You know what? Some scientists believe that. Like, the argument is not settled. That's why, like, the best answer for a question like that at this moment in time is, like, a fairly agnostic one. So the really simplified version of the trans sports argument is that uh, the biggest difference between men and women when it comes to sports is the differences in uh, muscle mass and your hemoglobin, both of which are very, very radically changed by your hormones like testosterone. So the scientific consensus more or less now is that most of the differences are basically like wiped out by two to three years of uh, hormone therapy. But even after, like, 36 months of hormone therapy, some, dis some differences still stay there. They don't go away. Um, the trans women, on average, even after three years of hormones, still have a higher, like, muscle mass than cis women. Although, if you adjust for height, this is where, like, the big crux comes in, is that height kind of accounts for it, is that, like, trans women only have that higher muscle mass because they're, on average, taller. And then you can say, well, height 
is an unfair advantage in most sports, but we allow for it. So why would we suddenly draw a line at height? But then the question is, well, okay, if height is an acceptable advantage uh, in sports, an acceptable level of unfairness even, um, are we going to say the same thing if uh, suddenly like a bunch of sports become have like trans women at the top one, two or three positions and then we're thinking well height is an advantage but it's also height that's derived from having a male puberty then there might be a discussion there i don't know i'm still on the side that trans women competing in women's sports is fine but it's not like a set in stone answer i don't think i think you can easily have a non-bigoted uh position on throwing it the other way because the uh the sort of reverse uno you could say is that if we're saying you need three to four years on HRT to compete in cis women's sports, then you're kind of saying to trans women, well, you're excluded from cis women's sports until you go through three or four years of HRT, which is where you're like, okay, well, why, what, that might be what, you just can't compete until you've crossed the HRT, like, threshold. You just have to train and, like, compete in friendlies and shit. Like, okay, fuck, yeah, yeah there's, there's a discussions out there. So, okay, probably didn't get banned for that, but... Interesting discussion. Um, the other thing he uh, might have said was that uh, he referred to certain trans creators as subhuman. Uh, oh, okay. Which I think, like, in certain contexts, that can be transphobic, but I think you'd have to probably look at a pattern of behavior, first of all, to call that transphobic. Like, if you're the kind of person who calls everyone subhuman, like, I call people subhuman. I call, your, I call chat subhuman. I call the fucking Groiper Raiders subhuman. I call conservatives sub Like, okay. That's not, yeah, that's not immediately obvious. I also think when people use things like that, because I think there was also, uh, when he said something like, it's pointless and engaging with the trans discussion because of, like, these communities are, like, all a bunch of, like, inbred losers or whatever the fuck. And it's like, I don't know. I think people, I think that kind of portrays, like, a really kind of weird understanding of of bigotry. Because when I think back to my own childhood of dealing with, like, anti middle eastern like bigotry then i always wonder it was like if say, say there were like two kinds of people and there was the ones who called me like a sand n-word because that happened and then there were the ones who um kind of like very politely but like nervously would ask me about my allegiances during the iraq war or the afghan war or like about, about my to what extent do i sympathize with like the terrorist cause and shit like that and i'm like which one of those is more racist to me and obviously like the latter right people calling you the sand n word like fucking hell like pe the, ironically the people who defended me against like people who were actually like physically trying to attack me and shit were the ones who called me a sand n word right I, yeah, again, like, I, I hate this. I really don't like this culture of finding someone with a three-second clip, calling someone else, like a, like, a marginalized person, like, subhuman, or, like, even using a slur. I, I just, I don't think it's enough. It's never enough. It's, it, it, it's like when Joe Rogan was getting in trouble for spreading all the vaccine misinfo, which was really bad, like, really irresponsible. But then all of a sudden, someone else dug up, like, two minutes of him saying the n-word over a period of 20 years and they were like oh this will get him and it's like no you just look like a fucking you just look like a bunch of morons like you just look you just look like people who like everything that happened before 2017 like just didn't happen to you like that's what you look like some people are saying it might have been i, I also always wonder like, when someone gets banned like people always try to pin it down on something they said in the last two or three days even though twitch can sometimes take time to build up these kind of cases or to process complaints and stuff like that so like maybe some people might say it was like the stealthing discourse when uh some very small twitter account uh did a kind of like me too style tweet about how uh she had been stealthed and she uh, didn't she felt too awkward i think was the word to speak up about it at the time and then um that brought up what i mean i personally thought could have been an interesting discourse about like the measures women can take to protect themselves against uh assault and uh but of course the destiny approach was to take this random twitter user uh quote tweet them and then talk about how um sh you they shouldn't deserve to like how like if you can't stand up for yourself 
if you're being stealth, then you shouldn't have casual sex. And he's making all these like uh, comment, like comments on this person's case, to which I thought something like, okay, even if this is a discussion that you want to have, and I think this, I think everything should be up for discussion, especially like on Twitch, like it's a fucking online platform, you know. Um, I would have thought like, okay, why not have this discourse without using a random Twitter user who's probably in her head just doing like a kind of Me Too post? Like, why not have this discourse without putting this case at the forefront? Because I thought like, if you're going by a tweet, you know nothing about this uh, encounter. Like you're going by what she's given us in the tweet. That's not like, which is probably almost always not going to be enough information to make a judgment against that person. Which turned out to be true. It turned out that she'd like the stealthing thing had actually been like she didn't realize until after it happened. Or, I'd... but you know, I guess to him doing it in that way of just saying like, "Oh, I heard some discourse. Let's talk about this." Instead of actually, uh, yeah, he retweeted Mind Waves, who quote tweeted the person, right? Yeah. Um. But I guess to to him, I guess doing it in the way I would suggest is probably just less interesting to him, I guess, and less, it brings less attention. Oh, okay. Um, it was like when that stealthing discourse happened, I, um, I remember thinking, I actually was really unsure about that whole thing because I thought like, okay, I've got my own opinion on this, but I'm not a woman and all that. So I, like, I don't know. So I did actually ask, um, I made sure actually, because I think the destiny take was that if you see, if you notice someone in the moment trying to stealth you, you should, um, you should call them out because the chances are if they're trying to stealth you, then they're, uh, probably the kind of person who is just going to try to do what they can get away with. And they're trying not to get called out. Like they don't like they'll, they'll back off if they're noticed. And then I thought like, is that really true? Like maybe I imagine like that would be the case most of the time, but is it worth the risk? Is it worth that like increasing that tiny chance of them being violent? So I like, I, I actually specifically asked uh, women I know who like enjoy fighting, like they've been in fights with men and they have no problem like <laughs> doing that. And then um, like the, response I got was like okay if this was happening to you or if this has happened to you in the past is like what's your thought process and they're kind of like well the first the first thing I'm thinking is like when that happens is can I take this guy can I get out of the house quick enough like where are my clothes like will this guy be violent like will this guy be overly defensive will he try to gaslight and like you're thinking about all this stuff in a split second moment and even in that case is like I think the like most like convincing answer I got or the most interesting one was like well if I can't take him in a like in a fight then I'm just gonna like let it happen because it's not worth the risk um which is pretty sad um but again discourse if that's the discourse you want to have uh I I think you should be allowed to um because I think the problem that people have with destiny is not so much what he advocates for because as far as what he advocates for, he's like a center left liberal. He's probably more left wing than like 90% of people who live in the United States. Um, I think the problem with that people have with him is more a question of taste, right? That's probably like the best word. But they, they, like people think what he does is distasteful. And I agree. I think, yeah, I don't really like him as a person. I like his content a lot, but yeah, I, I, I tend to just enjoy the content from a safe from a distance um and i always feel like there's not really much point in uh talking to him about his behavior because if you maybe brought him because i've watched quite a bit of him recently and if you bring him up on something like you know with the stealthing thing like you know, are you sure you should just like be tweeting this uh like quote, like bringing attention to this random twitter user um and why don't you just like have the discourse on your on your Twitch stream or speak about it in like a kind of like in an abstract sense rather than making it about putting using this person as your kind of like way into the conversation. And then he would probably say something like, well, no, if, if someone's going to fucking talk about how they're going to get stealth and they're too awkward to fucking stand up for themselves, of course, I'm going to fucking tweet up about that person. Of course, if you, you speak on the Internet, you give your fucking opinions on the Internet. Of course, you're going to of course, I'm going to talk about it. Get the fuck out of it. He would say something like that. Right. Because to him, it's obvious. If you talk on the internet, you should expect these things to happen. Like, that's the way of the world. That's the, that's the kind of response he would give. 
Um, it's really like, I, I read in like pop psychology a little while ago that like, I'd never actually seen this behavior in a person before that it was, I think it might've been that book called the psychopath test, that really stupid, like pop psychology thing. And they basically said like, like a sociopath will do this thing where, uh, they believe that their behavior is actually the way everyone is. Their worst excesses is actually are just the way of the world. And everyone else is actually like this, or they would be if they weren't scared of the consequences. I sometimes feel like when people bring him up on his really, on his worst excesses, he kind of responds in that way. Like to him, it's just obvious. It's like, it's like an imperative. I, I, I find that really, I've never seen a person actually uh, justify themselves in that way before. But it does bring up, like, as far as people who actually um, attack him, there is a really odd thing where, like, small content creators seem to make it, like, this almost essential part of their identity to just attack Destiny on Twitter or on Twitch or used to be on Twitch. And I always wonder, like, where that obsession comes from or where that kind of, where that entitlement comes from where they expect to fire shots constantly at this bigger creator and not to get any blowback from it which is kind of impossible i remember on that panel when i was talking to um and it was like me and like seven other people saying that destiny shouldn't be banned and one person saying he should be and i was trying to be like sympathetic to what she was saying but at the end of it, I realized that she was talking about how, like, Destiny was hate raiding her, even though only, like, four people were in her chat. And one of them said, like, a transphobic slur. One of them said 41%, but the other ones were just saying, like, you're dumb or whatever. Like, and I just thought, there's a really weird dynamic here. And it, it makes me wonder about, like, the ethical uh, question of, if you're a big creator with a very, very big audience, um, What's your responsibility when you have to expect that if you say something inflammatory, you have to probably expect that your community will probably echo something similar and maybe even worse. That's usually the way I see it. Like, usually if you say something inflammatory, you're kind of giving this little orange to green light of like, do this, but worse. Um, but then what's the, what's the responsibility of that creator versus the responsibility of thousands upon thousands of people who are completely anonymous and can just get away with saying anything they want with no consequences. And if you're a big creator and you're on the receiving end of a thousand anonymous accounts who don't have to worry about consequences and you have to match them, you're always going to be the one who looks worse because there are more eyes on what you say. Do you know what I mean? Like if, so like if I matched, if I decided to go on Twitter and matched the energy of like all the uh, alt writers in my comments who call me a Jew, like, or some variety of that, like I'd look, I'd look pretty bad. Right. But when it, but does, does that mean I just like, I don't have a right to do it though? Like, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's really like a good way to go about it because the only reason I don't really get as angry with the left as Destiny does, because I probably agree with him to, like, when it comes to the online left, fuck, okay, when it comes to the online left, I never really felt this until quite recently, because whenever I heard people bitching about the uh, toxicity of, like, the Twitter leftist, I'd always just be like, like, what, where, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I don't see this, like, where is it, like, show me, and then I didn't really see it until I tweeted out that Kyle Rittenhouse probably wasn't fake crying on the court stand and probably was acting in self-defense. I said he was almost definitely going to walk. And then that was when Bad Bunny, uh, Bad Empanada, fucking, I don't know, Mike from PA, I think the Cavernical, like all these people just fucking like went completely nuclear on me. Bad Bunny calling me like a white fascist or whatever the fuck. Bad Empanada calling me a colonist or like, and then just all these fucking dickheads and their followers just coming like all at me and like all their followers as well. And I just thought like, 
looking at their arguments, like these people are actually deranged. People unsubbing for me for, for this one take and shit. And then I think it happened again when I went on Twitter and said Destiny didn't deserve to get banned. That also triggered a big fucking wall of text and shit in my uh, messages and on Twitter. So I just thought like, yeah, the online left is actually really fucking bad. Or at least the, the worst access. I don't doubt that the right is worse. I know the right does this as well. Um, but yeah, the online, like the online Twitter left are like really fucking horrible. And I don't think the only reason I don't devote as much energy to them as uh, Destiny does is maybe one, because they've not given me nearly as much shit. Like they've given me less than 0.1% of the shit they've given someone like Destiny. But I also just think like, and I want to, if, if I ever have to remind myself of this in the future, it's just the fact that like, okay, I hate these people, but like how much power do these people actually have? I, like the answer is none, right? You know, Bernie Sanders failed in America. Corbyn failed in Britain. Like the left, like the far left doesn't have power, at least the, in the English speaking world. Um, which is probably a lot of the explanation for why they're like that on, on Twitter, you know, because what's the saying? Is it like impotence corrupts just as much as power? And then I think like, okay, there's maybe if there's like a hundred or 200 fucking Twitter leftists, like shit talking me, calling me a fascist and all that, or maybe even trying to harass people I know, I, I don't know, or sending threats and shit, then it's like, okay, I could go at them and bad empanada and bad bunny and all that. Or I could go at the um, very kind, very like well-spoken uh, member of parliament who just has some, who loves her trans friends, but just has some concerns about teaching it to children and then proceeds to legislate against the entire existence of trans youth. I'm probably going to focus on the latter, right? But it takes a lot of fucking, I feel like even from where I am, it's taken like a little bit of self-discipline to do that. <laughs> And that's like over me getting attacked, like never, basically, like once or twice. So I think it's very easy for me to empathize with why Destiny behaves in the way that he does or why he feels the way that he does about like the online left. Um, it's, it's also hard to balance the fact that from where I stand, as a, from where you stand as a spectator, like there's no way to handle it like that without looking bad. <laughs> but that's really the only argument i feel like i've seen against us there's a really frustrating moment in that in that debate as well where uh josie was talking about like think about all the uh trans femmes who have been hurt by destiny and i'm like okay what about all the trans femmes who were hurt because contrapoints used a buck angel voiceover for eight seconds in one of her videos like they went fucking like like, they tried to destroy her. She went quiet for months because of that. And that's someone who's, like, whose whole identity and whose, whose whole, like, professional mission is to help trans people, is to help and to help the world understand and accept trans people. And then that happens to you? Like, fuck. And when people say, oh, Destiny, like, br crossed the line because he called people, like, uh, mentally ill or subhuman and all that, well, ContraPoints compared online trans leftists or like lgbt leftists to nazis she said that the accounts attacking her from the left were indistinguishable from the twitter accounts of nazis i know you guys don't think it's analogous all right i was saying in response to the point that we just think about the trans fans i know destiny's been worse okay i know he's been more aggressive he's been more vitriolic he's been more abrasive yeah i know i've been more insensitive i know okay I think as far as like optically, you could probably say that ContraPoints like handled the thing like better. Is there a video? Yeah, D ContraPoints' cancelling video is all about that. So the question is, is like, yeah, Destiny's very fucking distasteful. Like he's pretty horrible. He's pretty fucking mean and shit. But like the question is whether it's ban worthy. Like that's the big difference. And I don't think it's ban worthy. And the reason is that, like, the things that he gets accused of that are, would be ban-worthy, I think, is, like, brigading. He doesn't brigade people's streams. Like, community um, 
like he polices his community like very excessively. Like he basically like his policy is uh, if you're getting harassed or like racially abused and all that, you screenshot what they say and and he bans them across like every platform, which is why actually um, even though Josie was sp like basically giving every like was like talking pretty aggressively about destiny for like an hour on that hippy dippy. She only had to ban four people and there were 10,000 people watching people accuse him of hate raiding. Like that's not what, so hate raiding and brigading is when a creator like deliberately and explicitly directs their community to go into another person's chat or to their comment section or to their discord to just spam them with slurs and with like, if possible, if it's, if it's a discord, then it would be like gore and shit like that, or into their emails. Like that's brigading. That's what a hate raid is. If you've been here when Cozy have done a hate raid, that's a hate raid. Okay. Destiny doesn't do brigades. He doesn't do raids. He doesn't do, he's been accused of what? Like his community have been accused of doxing. He doesn't do doxing. Okay. Like I think for a big creator, for a creator with that many viewers, I don't really know examples of people who do it like like a better job, to be honest. Like if you compare it to like Hassan, who actually goes on like Reddit looking for like live stream fails clips and getting his entire audience of like 40,000 people to downvote it. Like when you look at like community moderation, right? Mike from PA. Oh yeah, he did. What did he? Yeah, he doxed uh, Mike from PA. In other words, he showed that there was a link on Mike from PA's Twitter that linked to a personal account that had his full name on it. Is that what he did? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Oh, God. I was there. We were all there. Hey, Wicked Supreme. How's it going? Um, I think maybe the argument you could make... Also, if we're talking about Hassan, fucking hell. Last time I was on Hassan's stream, I was streaming while I was watching Hassan's. He was watching the UN. He was watching the UN uh, condemnation of Russia's in invasion of Ukraine. And the Chinese person was speaking and Hassan's chat went fucking ballistic, like China simping, like tanky fucking like no genocide, ooh woo fucking like simping for the China, the CCP and shit. And he doesn't do anything about that. Clearly he doesn't because I know he doesn't, I know Hassan doesn't believe in that stuff himself. I think if, if Twitch was really concerned about like bad community policing or bad management or like careless carelessness and all that like yeah Hassan would have been gone way before destiny are you trying to say that destiny does have control over his community or it does well i would say the way that he does have control over his community and something that again like i've said this a million times and i don't i don't actually know that many like uh, even a lot of the uh the quote-unquote orbiters on twitch will agree with me on this like that the problem is that when you act so like aggressively and, and like with so much vitriol towards like a particular person, even if you're telling the community not to harass them, you kind of have to remember that you've got a community of fans who a lot of whom like want to be kind of like you, but they can't really emulate the parts of you that are uh, that take a bit of effort, right? They can't really emulate like the intelligence or the rhetoric or the debate skills. Like that's a very hard thing to do. What's easy to emulate is the worst excesses of that person, which is why um, Destiny will say something mean and his chat will say something worse. Like that's usually, that's, that's usually the, that's like the simple formula. So I do think if you're a big creator, it's maybe worth considering um, like without trying to be like a fucking Christian or whatever, like, yeah, just to consider that what you say, if it's aggressive to someone or if it's like vitriolic is like, it's worth considering, like, am I okay with parts of my community doing the same and saying the same as what I've said, but a bit worse, you know? No, I think Twitch had a reason to ban him. Twitch's reason to ban him was that, um, he stirs up a lot of shit and Twitch uh, likes having a politics space, but they don't want any of the baggage that comes with having a politics space. They don't want the dis like the very aggressive disagreements and the uh, like nasty comments going back and forth and all like, that's what they don't want. I don't, but I don't know. My only point is, is that 
he he didn't cross like what I would say the threshold is to get banned because okay crux of the oh, fuck I'm sorry it took so long to get here but um stop stop fucking saying the things that he did that broke TOS okay I know he brought on Fuentes I'm talking about morally okay Jesus Christ if it's TOS every we should all be banned okay fuck you but I'm talking about things about why w people on the left are celebrating the ban. That's what's pissing me off, all right? Because now, you know, and Keffels, I mean, I like the ratioing and the jokes and all that shit, but like, just like openly celebrating the ban and like talking as if it's like this massive fucking win. I'm like, I really, I, 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 it's still within my memory when like being left wing and like free speech was actually like a left wing value. Like, like whether it was during McCarthyism or during the Patriot Act or during the uh, whatever the fucking thing in Britain is where they were like the Snoopers Charter or the Conservative Party trying to ban porn or the fucking Conservative Party trying to uh, like suspect every other person of being a terrorist and take them in for interrogation with like no evidence at all or the Conservative Party trying to ban protests and shit like that in the UK. Like, fuck. I, I don't know. I thought... I thought that was what, what we were supposed to be about. And now we're basically banning someone who we think is distasteful. Now, is that a defense of absolute free speech? No. No. And I think the problem is when I see people trying to, uh, say, defend the case for banning Nazis, they do it in a really shit way. Like, if I was to ask you, why do you ban Nazis or why do you ban fascists? Like, what would you say? Would you say it's because of their ideology, like their murderous ideology, or because they dehumanize people? Or be, like, actually, that's not the reason. If it's just their ideas, I think ideas should be up for discussion. They are in academia. Academics discuss all kinds of mad shit. Um, when it comes to banning Nazis, it's not the ideology that you ban them for. It's their behavior. It's because part of Nazi ideology kind of uh, necessitates uh, behavior that hurts the free speech of others. It's because if you're a Nazi on Twitch, and this is what a lot of them do, or, or used to do on YouTube or whatever, is you don't believe that women, that trans people, that gay people, that POCs, you, you don't believe these people deserve free speech. If you're like a proper Nazi fascist, like you don't believe those other people deserve to speak. So what you might do is, if you've got a big enough following, you will jump into the smallest fucking like new trans or women femme creator or whatever and then jump in and send your chat in to send them like slurs to try and dox them to try and fucking uh just like to to hate raid to actually hate raid and to just completely disorientate them and just to keep them off the platform like and the problem is like, that's the argument. Because if as soon as you talk to, a, like, a free speech bro and you say, oh, we should, get, we should ban Nazis because they're too hateful or because they're too fucking, like, their ideology is too... That doesn't work on them. That doesn't work on them. That doesn't work on the fucking free speech bros. Like, the way you get someone who is tied to the free speech idea is you show them how the existence of Nazis on a Twitch platform is actually anti-free speech, which is why... The cozy TV guys, they shouldn't be on Twitch because they're fucking, they hate raid. They, they're not there about, they're not there to have discussions. They're there to, they're there to try and get other people off the platform. That's their job. However, someone like provoked Britney or even that fucking dipshit like Mio, like these people are fucking like, they're like fucking damp socks. Like they just want to talk about Lil Timmy and they, they want to talk about Lil Timmy from fucking... Uh, like fucking butthole to breakfast like that's all they want to talk about that's fine which sh it should be okay to debate them on twitch and i'm sorry holy shit everyone in here saying twitch gets to decide i know twitch gets to decide i'm not talking about fucking what is this is this a fucking socialist platform i'm sorry well private companies can do it fuck you like i don't care i know twitch can do what they want i'm saying whether or not that should be the case I don't, I fucking hate you people. Oh my god! And you saying was it hate speech is illegal? This has nothing to do with hate speech. Hate speech, hate speech laws. If you've ever read any of them, hate speech laws are about motive of a crime that already exists. 
you can't get done for hate speech unless you're already like stalking or harassing or inciting violence or something like that. Hate is the motive. That's how hate crime works. It's a hate crime. I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you a good argument, chat. Fucking hell. Like, good luck going to a fucking libertarian cuck dipshit absolute free speech quoting John Locke and like j fucking coming over Christopher Hitchens vods and shit. Good luck telling them that you want to get the Nazis out because they're bad. <laughs> no. Get them off because if you think that you can just have a bunch of fucking hate raiding, brigading, doxing, griper Nazis on Twitch, then you actually don't want free speech. You're taking the side of the group that thinks other people don't deserve free speech. You're actually stifling discussion when you advocate to put them on Twitch. And they can't get out of that. Why am I defending this person? I don't even fucking like Destiny. Just Jesus Christ. But no, no, actually, fuck you. No, like, yeah, I don't think people should get banned for doing what he, what, like, what he does. No. And you all, sound you all sound like fucking morons, actually. Like, like... You're bad leftists. If you think it's like cool and like, if you think it's fucking banging that this guy who is like more left wing than like most people in on, on the planet and shit, like, and you think it's just good, good that he got like banned for, for an unspecified reason and it's a huge win for, no, it's not. Fucking hell. But he was very mean and he's a lib. So, you know, Bro, ignore the fact that he broke to you. Oh my God. I, I, I don't understand. Like, is what I'm saying not going through to you. It's not about whether or not he broke TOS. It's whether or not those terms of service are morally justified. You know Twitch TOS is absolute dog shit, right? Dreadnor, Dreadnor, whatever the fuck. You know, like, you know everyone on Twitch is breaking TOS, right? All the fucking people watching, like, streaming fucking Gordon Ramsay or like anime shows and all that. You know, that's all fucking like, that's all susceptible to TOS, right? You know, having like bad chatters, that's all TOS. Like, what do you mean? And are we not allowed to, are we not allowed to say these are the TOS, but uh, they could be better. They're not good right now. Or are we just going to do that? Because what you're doing is if it was someone you liked who got banned because of some stupid arbitrary TOS uh, decision, you know what you'd be like? You'd suddenly be, you'd change, you'd change. You'd be against TOS. You would say, oh, fucking Twitch, like, getting rid of this person because of some stupid, like, what, because the sea slur? Are you kidding me? What if it's someone like me? Like, a lot of my income comes from Twitch. <laughs> I'd be in a fucking difficult place if I got banned from here. Oh, yeah, just, just follow the TOS. Oh, uh, yeah, just... Just follow the TOS, even though it's incredibly vague and fucking arbitrary and inconsistent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just follow that TOS. Yeah. Have you ever tried to... You, you clearly haven't tried to read the TOS. If you had, you wouldn't be saying any of this. You have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Can you say DGG for life? No. Dazov Battalion. All right. There you go. Your content would be so dull if you worried about TOS that much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If, hey, if Dazov Battalion gets clipped and shipped, I'm okay with that, right? That's a good one. Fuck you. Really, Dreadnought? What did, what did they warn him about? Did they warn him about a specific action? Because, it's, because we, they haven't specified why he got banned. What the fuck are you talking? You, stop making shit up. You're lying to me right now. What did they warn him about? What specific behavior did they warn him about? The idea that it's only leftists to get happy when people they don't like get banned. I know everyone get. I know. I don't know. I don't know why you guys like have to do this. Like, it's like your, it's like your fucking team sports brain. Shit. I know that. Okay. I'm, I'm really annoyed right now about the left wing stance on free speech because it like doesn't seem to exist in this space. But I know the right doesn't care about it either, right? Like most, like 99% of anti free speech legislation in my country in the UK comes from the Conservative Party. They're the ones who tried to ban porn production. They're the ones who tried to ban fucking, like, protesting. They're the ones who brought in the Snoopers Charter, okay? Like, they're the ones who don't give a fuck about... They're the ones who don't give a fuck about free speech, but... Do I have a single shred of evidence to think leftists think freedom of speech isn't important? Yeah, like, just look at... <laughs> oh, God. Keffels was, like, threatening to ban someone for saying, um... For calling a partnered trans streamer a subhuman piece of shit. Twitch that like this is this is really I've, 
I like Keffels, okay? I've DM'd Keffels, like, throughout this whole thing. I like the, the ratios are very funny, okay? I don't think you should be threatening to get people kicked off for, for calling someone a subhuman piece of shit. That's a very broad insult. That's anecdote. Oh, I'm sorry. Allow me to produce a study on left-wing content creators going against values of free speech. RJ, fuck you. Oh my God. You are so fucking banned. Get the fuck out of here, dumb shit. All right, there you go. Free speech, yeah, there you go. Sorry, uh, freedom of speech is not freedom of consequences. Uh, you didn't, uh, you clearly didn't read the loner box terms of service that um, I wrote on my fucking butthole. Jesus, are you a free speech absolutist? Uh, okay, I'm gonna assume people have just been jumping in, all right? No, I'm not a free speech absolutist. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a fucking moron, okay? See, look, even Major League Base is happy when people get their free speech censored sometimes. We're all like this. We all have our, we all have our little, sp you know, free speech, it's not the right to a platform is not the right to a fucking megaphone, okay? We know that. We know that some people will use their free speech exclusively to destroy the free speech of others. That's not cool. We know some people will use their free speech to try and dox people. That's not cool. We know people will use their free speech to try and like fucking uh, incite violence. We know that's pretty fucking uncool. We know people will use their free speech to try and like drive other people out of like their community. We yeah, okay, we know. Like, But I do think, as far as being on a platform, that should be a fairly high threshold. You know what I like? You know what I'm a fan of, right? I think Twitter have shown us a bright future because Twitter is pretty aggressive with their bans, right? But they don't need to be. They've given, they've given a brilliant... Uh, look, wait, where the, wait, is he gone? What the fuck, people? Oh, here he is. We got him. See, Twitter, before banning someone, right? There probably is a threshold where you deserve to get banned. But before that, this. This is my new uh, TOS recommendation for social media. They should all just, they should do this. Look how fucking cool this is. He was tweeting out Kremlin fucking bullshit for so long. And Twitter didn't ban him. They just cemented onto his profile <laughs> Russia state-affiliated media. He can't get rid of this. This is, like, tied down to his profile. And he's really angry about it. Look at that. <laughs> My personal Twitter account is not state-affiliated media. <laughs> Nobody at RT or Russia tells me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> He's free. He took a picture of it from the dis of his computer. <laughs> he couldn't even screenshot his own phone or whatever the fuck. Like, yeah, this is what you should do. This is how you deal with pieces of shit. That you know, this is what they should have done. Instead of banning Trump, you know what they should have done? They instead of uh, Russia state affiliated media, they should have just written "lost the election by seven million votes" uh, copium. Like the the actual people with the copium mask. That's what that's what Twitter should have done. I think I think we're on to a bright new future. Plus ratio, plus L, yeah. And you know what? Instead of banning Dustin from Twitch, what they should have done is just had like a like a like a picture, like a two D picture of like of a smiling Stephen Bunnell and just anchored it to his face for like two weeks. And every uh, one and a half minutes uh, of like a calming voice with whale noises in the background just goes over his stream and says, calm down, Stephen. Like that's, that's what they should have done. Calm down, Stephen. You are a whale on a wave. <laughs> that's what they, okay. It isn't worth it, Stephen. That okay, that I think we've solved the problem. What's this? Oh. Yeah, this is what the Soviet sage, that was a dumb comment. That was a really that was a really dumb comment. You're getting timed out. Okay. I need a I need a relaxing tune for this. So yeah, this is it. This is the alternative 
to banning Destiny from Twitch should have been for two weeks, every, every two minutes on his stream, they just fastened this to his content. How I wake up knowing my enemies are humans like me, who deserve empathy while I work to change their wrong worldview and fight against its evil consequences. You are better than this, Stephen. You're a, you're a whale on a wave in the wind, in the, in the earth. <laughs> Please, Stephen, take a deep breath. You're, you're more than this. You are a whale. Yeah, that, that, okay, that, that's, that would have been better, okay? That's better than a ban. That's the morally correct way to enforce your TOS.